I've already seen something that's changed my life. Business of Architecture, episode 409. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building an architecture practice that empowers you to do your best work more often. This podcast is produced by Business of Architecture, leading business consultancy for architects that helps firm owners structure their practice and their teams for freedom, greater fulfillment, and financial reward. Every year here at Business of Architecture, we take on a select number of firms to work with to implement the smart practice method. As part of this process, we run a yearly transformation contest to celebrate the growth and the continual success of these exceptional firm owners. Today, in today's podcast episode, you'll hear five of their stories. Each of these firm owners that you'll hear today has shown courage, passion, and drive in their stand to be the best leaders they can be. After you listen to each of these stories, head over to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash transformation so that you can vote for your favorite. I hope you are touched, moved, and inspired by these courageous and heroic firm owners. The first that we'll hear from is architect Ryan Biles. Hey everybody, this is Ryan Biles. I'm an architect in Lone Oak, Arkansas. Uh, My practice consists of me and a part-time intern. And our specialty is adaptive reuse for historic buildings in downtown fabrics and small communities throughout the Delta. Primarily, I knew that I was um, lacking some direction, lacking some focus, for sure. Um, My days, my schedule, um, the uh, trajectory of my practice were all very um, undetermined, um, and there wasn't a clarity of purpose there. Um, so after I came to the realization that I had not fully embraced the role, uh, of a firm owner as a small business person, um, as not just a person who trades money for architecture, but actually as someone who's leading an organization. And when I came to the understanding that I needed to really become a better business person, um, I engaged with business of architecture and wanted to make sure that I was able to, A, um, find an accountability partner and a cohort that would keep me accountable. Uh, B, learn basics about process um, and firm management. And, uh, and C, again, just have that direction that was, was, I had recognized was lacking due to a lack of purpose. When I'd worked for a larger firm, I always understood that stress and having a certain level of, um, you know, <laughs> a lack of health was just part of being an architect. Um, my own sense of purpose behind what I was doing as a as a practitioner person in the field um, was was not really existent in terms of relating how I did my work to who I was as a person and my, my spiritual purpose. Um, and again, having been an architect for so many years, I don't know that I'd really considered any impact on my family directly, um, other than I believed that things could potentially be better. I didn't have a clarity behind what that would be. Financially, that was, that was the biggest uh, motivator. Um, there was no consistency, and I didn't have a basic financial understanding of how to operate a business and the long-term impacts that my lack of understanding were having. So for me, uh, some key results so far are, first of all, um, an, an increased level in um, my business literacy, um, my financial competency, um, just some core things that without these, I, I don't really know how I could have sustained as a business owner for, for, for much longer on the, on the pattern um, that I was on. Gaining a level of confidence by virtue of um, my smart practice cohort, 
um, by virtue of the systems that we've learned and are implementing um, and the confidence that I have an ability to be a leader, to be, um, to lead a practice. Um, I'd always thought of myself as a leader, but weirdly not in the context of a, um, of my architecture practice. And so again, competence and confidence, um, are two big growth areas for me. The confidence has absolutely, um, changed the way I approach my conversation about the work that I do with others. Um, and again, of course, it's affected my self-talk as well. And so um, I'm extremely grateful um, because there's so much clarity behind why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I think for me, when we're talking about work environment, um, having now had my own practice um, as essentially just myself and in, in, in the location for um, nearly two and a half years, um, that's a much different environment than, than I've ever been in. But for about half of that time, again, I didn't know what I was doing. So um, it was me on my own. And I would just say um, I did not feel like I had a support system because I didn't. I didn't have a lot of confidence. So it was, it was somewhat without uh, a little bit wayward, right? Somewhat, well, certainly without a direction. And so that does um, that does affect attitude that affects physical environment in terms of kind of what we surround ourselves with. And, um, again, I think I would describe my work environment now. And again, it's just me and I share some studio space with some others, but that are, are not related to my practice. Um, I, I really find a lot of joy in my work. Um, a lot of joy in my work environment. There's a lot of reasons for that. And, and the organizational maturity that's occurred because of, um, the systems that we put in place and the, the approach that we're taking through the smart practice method um, has, has resulted in so many things in the work environment that bring joy, but um, just even, even the physical environment, there's, there's something about being very, um, I guess, comfortable and, and proud of what we're building and confident that there's a future there. Now that I understand what's possible and now that we have been engaged over a year um, I can absolutely say that my level of stress, again, something that I had really, to me, been a foregone conclusion as an architect, that's the way things are going to be, because in a previous environment, that's what had always been modeled to me. To have that be so 180 degree different than where I was, um, where I was previously um, employed and, and that had really defined the culture of practice for me. Um, it's been a relief, um, again, not just, that's, that's the word for me. It's, I, I feel relieved. Um, the confidence that referenced the previous answer, um, has absolutely, um, changed the way I approach our progress has been demonstrable. We, we've doubled our revenue in a year, uh, year over year. Um, I've learned to delegate tasks. I have people I can delegate tasks to now. And so that transformation has been Financially, it's been in the business development um, methodology and the results of that methodology. Um, and I think the most key and crucial piece has been the um, the first thing that we did, which was the mission, vision, mission, vision and purpose statements. Um, the crafting of that, that which has now become a daily essential review for me, that aligns my focus every day to a greater purpose that I can easily recall, um, easily access and draw upon has been a phenomenal transportation transformation for me. Wow. Amazing insights. What an incredible share from Ryan. Next up on our list, you'll hear from architect Paul Southhouse. Hi, I'm Paul Southhouse. I own and run a practice of architects in Oxford in the UK. Our focus is on building homes and making sure everyone can afford to buy a home. That's our, our, our key focus. I'm also an owner of a, a bar and off license, which is part of the architectural practice. And the focus of that is to inspire creative spirits. So bringing people in having discussions, having arguments 
um, and just as an architectural practice engaging with people and um, us having a, f a front door and people can talk to us and really thrash through issues or think of solutions to, to things and really change the way we practice and our position within the community. Okay, so if you'd asked me a year ago who I was, I'd be Paul Southhouse. I'd be an architect and I'd have two assistants helping me and I'd really be, um, I was limited in the impact I could have locally and globally. My instinct is that I have a greater purpose and to have an impact more widely and change the world um, in some way. I think doing that, I'll be doing that locally, which then have an impact more widely just on, on the approach. As architects, we are creative thinkers. We, we start off with a blank piece of paper and create something, solve, pro solve a problem. Now, if you think about that from a, a system viewpoint, right from the beginning, how things are even conceived, how we, how we talk to each other, imagine spaces, there's, there's currently a lot of conflict and everyone sort of made sure there's a sort of divide, divide and rule by the system, opposite parties, uh, arguing against things and things getting done and not in the best way. And if we come together and agree the best way forward, we can, we can create the best solution for everyone. In terms of what has changed, it's me understanding myself and others around me. And really, that, that's the key. It's just about people and connecting people, inviting the right people in at the right time has made a, a fundamental breakthrough. There are obviously many systems and processes that have been brought in place to, to support that, but it, it's simply down to connecting people, getting the right people in to do the, the right job. There are ups and downs in a process of transformation. I think overall there'd be a, a huge up, but uh, there's a huge challenge as well and uh, I face many challenges extreme extreme lows and extreme highs so I think uh, like any design process you're going to experience amazingness and then also ex just just really tough challenges uh, but remaining positive just gets gets you through. Previous to joining the business of architecture, a practice of three, I think over the year, and this has happened organically, I've hired seven people and also had to let three people go. So I don't know if the maths works, but that, there's six of us currently. And we have now an amazing team. Everyone knows exactly their purpose, where they are in the team, and what their role is. It's a really good feeling in the office, and through that, we're going to do great things. Amazing. Ina Kerr again, and next up, we're going to hear from architect James Perch. I'll let James tell you more. James, take it away. My name is James Perch and I own Creative Interface Architecture and Interiors uh, based outside of Atlanta in rural West Georgia. We focus mainly on commercial projects and high-end residential. When I got into architecture and interior design, I was passionate, idealistic. Um, I could see myself being uh, a world changer and uh, an influential, impactful person that, that dealt with real problems and made a big difference. Um, but my career path didn't take me, didn't give me those kind of opportunities. And I worked for the wrong firms. I worked for the wrong people. And 
those ambitions and that excitement and that idealism, um, it wasn't believed in by anybody but me. And so there was a hopelessness and a rudderless feeling to, to my career. When I started my own company, all I really knew to do was I just wanted to do what I saw wrong in those other companies and fix that. But I had never really worked for any companies that did it any differently. And so I didn't know enough to make the real big changes. I I couldn't grasp or understand what the difference was between where I was headed and the companies and the, and the architects and designers that I looked up to. And so I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a strategy. I didn't have uh, any idea how to get where I wanted to be. There was definitely some elements of my personality, my goals, my personal values, and my confidence that had been suffering. And I think I was getting used to it, which is alarming, um, that I was resigning to um, surrendering that ambition, which is alarming for me. Um, In years past, my relationships had suffered because of the frustrations that I had felt around work and my career and uh, the, my perceived lack of accomplishments. So I know that my relationships had suffered in the past. However, the last couple of years, uh, it's also been a pretty huge improvement. And it would, came with it, this, some changes that I had started to make in myself. Benefits come in the form of uh, peace and a feeling of um, purpose and satisfaction in uh, what I'm doing and why. And the reason behind it is clear to me now, um, and that gives me a great sense of peace. Um, also, confidence, not um, not just in what I can do, but that the plan I have right now is a great plan, um, and that this plan will get me, my company, where it needs to be. Um, so there's a there was always confidence in my ability to create great design and great art and great architecture. Um, now I have confidence in my ability to run a business and to be successful and profitable. The, the satisfaction uh, and the excitement around, I don't know if those are, those are emotions, but it's changed and it's a, it's a big change for the better. The work environment has improved pretty dramatically uh, for a lot of reasons one of the reasons is when we identify our purpose and we operate with integrity, we say no to the wrong projects. So we've eliminated a lot of the bad kind of projects that used to be time sucks. Um, and that has more impact on you than just just your time and just your bottom line. That sucks emotion and love of what we do out of our daily tasks and out of our daily experience. Another big aspect was to identify people's personality types, their strengths and weaknesses, and then create jobs for them within the company that suited their strengths and um, and delegating responsibilities to them that they're going to be good at and that they're going to embrace. So all the right people in all the right seats on the bus. The other aspect that has been a big change is the ambition or the enthusiasm that we see our future with. Um, so as we're having team meetings, uh, we used to talk about an ambitious future. We used to consider it as a possibility, but today it's, it's inevitable. It's, it's exactly where we're headed and we're all excited about it. And we talk about it openly. And so the enthusiasm that surrounds us is, is exciting. And, um, I'm the big, biggest example of that. The way that I feel about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it is, Uh, probably the area of of biggest change. We all talk about how this is one of the most exciting changes and the most um, rewarding things and experiences that we've ever been through. And yet it's different for every single one of us. So every single one of us is getting more than we expected. It's being catered to our needs, our desires, and our expectations. And each one of us are having a completely different and individual experience. Um, One area where B of A is making a big difference for me is finances, um, both in understanding them and implementing what I understand and in creating a new future for myself that's going to make some big changes for the better. It's going to change my family tree. I've gone from being rudderless and really didn't have a clue 
of how to change it to being very purpose driven, um, very excited about my future, uh, very confident about my plan, uh, very enthusiastic about sharing my plan with others, sharing my mission and my purpose with other people. And that changes everything about the way that my career is, is shaping up. So I can't wait to see what results are going to come next. And I'm anticipating big ones, but I've already seen something that's changed my life. Okay. Incredible story and share from James Perch. Now, Next on our list, you'll hear from architect Ron Howell. Here we go. Hi, my name is Ron Howell, and I have a four-man firm here in Los Angeles, and we focus mainly on high-end homes here on the west side of L.A. So I've been a licensed architect for over 30 years, and about 20 of that, I've been a sole proprietor. And about five years ago, I got really busy and decided, you know, I need help. I need to hire. I need to get a few people working for me. But I really didn't know how to go about doing that. So I decided to get a partner. And I got a partner who had had a a larger firm and knew how to run a firm and run uh, a business. And that didn't work out. Then for whatever reason, uh, the company just... uh, struggled. So I went back out on my own and decided I need help. I need a professional. I don't want to recreate the wheel here. I need some help to get this together because I'd like to take all this knowledge I've had and all this uh, body of work that I've had for the last 30 years and uh, figure out a way to put it together in a way that I can uh, retire and just put this body of work body of work to work for me. So uh, maybe teach some people who are, you know, future architects and, uh, you know, pass this down to someone who's interested in taking it over. I have no idea what that entails. So all nighters are tough on your body when you're 20. But uh, after 20 years of all nighters, it starts getting to you. And, you know, I got to the point where this is really starting to be a problem. Is I'm, I've got a meeting with a plan checker at 7 a.m. the next morning, and I'm up at 3, still finishing up the plans and getting ready to print it out at 6. And not only am I, am I a mess at the meeting with the plan checker, uh, it's just not, not healthy. And it's not good for my spiritual well-being. My, my constitution is not uh, well when I'm panicked and scrambling and not organized. So uh, that just didn't do well for me. Even as I tried to meditate and become, you know, spiritually enlightened here, the scrambling around and, and, and unorganized was, was making me crazy and, and, and killing me. And uh, not only was killing me, it was really hurting my relationships with both um, my, my employees and my significant others and family, friends, kids, um, you know, my employees, I was not, uh, you know, really ever trained to really take care of my employees in a way that was really inspiring. And I would just kind of get pissed off and, you know, what the fuck didn't they teach you, you know, the size of a two by four at school? What, what, what's wrong with you? No way to lead or no way to, you know, take control of a, a company, giving guys shit. So, I really needed to figure out a way to make these relationships a little more fruitful. And, uh, you know, financially I was, you know, scrambling every month to pay the bills and, and pay employees. And it was just, uh, you know, really, um, I, I had to do something. I had to do something. I was in a state of, you know, complete, basically panic. I had to get some organization. I had to get a figure out a way to, 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 Rain in my employees. I had to figure out a way to have uh, some kind of uh, financial clarity in the situation I was in. I just, I needed to know how to run a business. I did not know how to run an architecture firm. Boy, I could make plans. I could design. But as far as running a business, I needed help. So the main thing that the business of architecture did for me is it made me a better person. 
I am a better father, I'm a better businessman, I'm a better partner, and I'm a much better leader from learning about integrity. One of the first things that uh, they teach you in business of architecture is integrity. And it's something that was really, really missing in my life. And I didn't really realize it. I, I was always known as the guy who was always five minutes late. That was my reputation. And that's not a very good reputation to have, whether it's in business, whether it's partnerships or with your employees or with your kids. So to have that awareness and have that change really changed my life. And you know, there's a lot of parts of business of architecture that, that did great things for me. You know, feeling like I'm living my life with integrity feels amazing. It feels like I'm really finding my purpose in life yes, finally. Um, looking back, it kind of feels like shit that I've been, I don't even know how I got along this far <laughs> with this much, this far out of integrity, but it feels great that I'm, I'm going to move forward here and uh, be able to pass this on to my employees, to my kids. And this, this, this feeling of uh, confidence and, uh, and self-worth. So thanks. You know, business of architecture has helped my work environment by making me feel really good about talking to my employees. I, I look forward to it. And it was something that in some sense I dreaded. I just didn't know how to really speak to them and get the best out of them and inspire them as, as much as I wanted to. And uh, with the training from business of architecture, not only did I feel much more confident in, in guiding them, uh, I enjoy it. And I look forward to the interaction with my employees. So, that's a, a that's a big part of what they've given me. The other part is really getting my organization together. I really had a, a system when I was a sole proprietor that worked great for me, and I could knew where everything was and figured it out to be able to have a system that I could uh, expand and grow with, and uh, explain to my my employees and have a system that works for all of us has really been uh, uh, comforting and. And I just not knowing how to expand this system and having the business of architecture, not only their, their guidance, but uh, having their coaching and kind of taking me through those systems. So it's really been great. An amazing and incredible story of transformation from Ron Howell. Now, last but definitely not least, you'll hear from architect Matthias Daroch. Here is Matthias. Hi, my name is Matthias Daroch, and I'm the principal and founder of MIK Architecture. We are a four-person firm in Miami, Florida, and we specialize in high-end, contemporary, or modern-style residential projects, mainly for developers or investors down here in South Florida. I came to Miami from Chile as an investor myself, and I quickly realized that I needed to get my architecture license for various motives. Uh, when I finally, finally got, got it, I was able to create the firm. And as such, of course, new challenges came along. Now, a bit more context. While studying to earn my license in Florida, I was told so many times that architecture doesn't pay and that if I want to earn real money, I should be a builder. And I just didn't want to believe it. And my stubborn mind... I only wanted to prove them wrong. I also knew that it wasn't going to be easy and I didn't have the tools or the knowledge. So then another journey began. Who can I learn from? Who can teach me? How do I get the tools? A few months later after opening, <laughs> COVID hit. And that brought even more challenges. At the beginning, when I founded the firm, I felt empowered optimistic, ready to take on the world. A few months later, COVID hit and all those doubts <laughs> rushed into my head. Mentally, I was both challenged and worried about this new startup, plus this new pandemic world. On one hand, I was wanting to prove people wrong. Um, but on the other hand, 
I was asking to myself, what if they were right? Who am I to know those answers? What if I don't make ends meet? On top of that, I was physically exhausted. After studying to get my license and uh, starting the firm, I didn't have any buffer time to win down. Never really had that chance. And I was already working hard and late to meet the deadlines and trying to please clients. I was more worried about finishing plans and, pl and pleasing these clients than even thinking of what the next steps of the firm was going to be. And I was constantly extinguishing fires. In another time, we were, I would have thought that working hard meant to having a better pay, but that didn't really happen often enough. I never felt I had like that economic freedom I was looking for. And at the time, I would just say to myself, I'm investing my time, I'm planting seeds or whatever the excuse I thought of at the moment. Soon I realized that there were many firm things to be done that I either didn't know how to do them or I didn't know that I needed to do them. Not to mention strategy or actually the lack of strategy. All of that at the end added more pressure to my exhaustion. That same exhaustion also had a toll on my wife. She was the best during the whole studying to get my license period. She covered for me on household cores and she had an amazing patience. And she was also very excited for me. But she too was exhausted. Furthermore, just a few months later, she got pregnant. Or better said, we got pregnant. Suddenly, I didn't feel like I wanted to work all day, you know, and I wanted to have that good family time as well. So far, I've learned the importance of having goals and targets, but most importantly, a mission to set my eyes on. With that also came the tools to achieve the target, such as how to grow my firm, how to delegate, have a clear understanding of who does what and when. And during BOA, I grew from a solopreneur to a four-person team, and a great team, by the way. And I've learned the importance of having profits, the right projects, and knowing how to plan for the next 12 weeks, 12 months, and even 12 years. Everything comes down to my mindset. I'm a different person today, and I see myself as a businessman and not just an architect. I now have a plan and I stop worrying about being able to get ends meet. Today, I know that I'm on my way to proving others wrong. Architecture does, in fact, pay. <laughs> and it does without sacrificing design or the satisfaction of giving the best to your projects. It's the best of both worlds. I truly believe that today our work environment is great. We're very flexible, we take care of each other, we're all interested in a work-life balance. And in the end, we're also more productive. We don't point out any mistakes to judge, we do it to encourage, to find the solution, and to keep learning. Uh, we're also very flexible on remote working or the hours of work, uh, but I'm mostly proud of to say that we all prefer to go to the office rather than work from home. Because ultimately, we have fun. Even in the most stressful times. And that's a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed each one of these exceptional firm owner success stories. And let me ask you a question. Which one of these stories were you moved by the most? Now's your opportunity to cast your vote for who you think should be the winner who should receive this year's transformation contest award head on over to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash transformation to cast your vote the views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and i make no representation promise guarantee pledge warranty contract bond or commitment except to help you conquer the world Carpe diem.